Try, Adapt, Learn. In this video, we will try to replace the cylinder head gasket and clean carbon deposits inside the engine on our Ford 9N tractor project. If you haven't already subscribed, subscribe now for more videos including DIY, maintenance, and projects. At this point in the project, the hood, water pump, and cylinder head were previously removed. This was initiated from coolant leaking from the water pump shaft. Also keep in mind that at this point, I had chased the threads on the cylinder head studs. Chasing the threads will help remove the cylinder head and will also help to remove the head gasket. The videos leading up to this point will be in the playlist and some of them will be linked below in the description. Although I'm not planning to rebuild the engine at this time, I wanted to remove the cylinder head and replace the cylinder head gasket. With consideration to the coolant leaking from the water pump shaft, I wanted to do this to prevent a possible coolant leak in the near future. That being said, while removing the cylinder head, it also gave me a chance to look inside the engine. As seen, I started by removing the old cylinder head gasket. Like the gasket, the inside of the engine is definitely a little worn. Again, since there were no plans to rebuild the engine, the least I could do is try to remove some of the many carbon deposits. I used a small shop vac to help remove the large chunks of carbon. Here is a closer view of what the cylinders look like. As you can see I started scraping the carbon with a piece of plastic. Now I wouldn't recommend this to anybody, but as mentioned this engine was worn already. You can see both the pistons and the valves in this view because this is a Ford flathead. This engine is also known as a Ford L-head. I started using Marvel Mystery Oil to clean some of the carbon. I sprayed some on a shop towel, but letting it soak a while probably would have been a better choice. The cylinders would likely need to be resleeved and the pistons likely to be replaced. Speaking of the sleeves or cylinder walls, there's absolutely no cross hatching. Instead, they're pretty smooth except for vertical wear and tear marks and some of the other scratches. Now, these are indications that the cylinder walls or sleeves in this case need to be honed or resleeved. Back to the carbon, there was so much of it I just started to scrape it away. Again, I wouldn't recommend this method. All of that being said, I knew the next time I'd take the head off would likely be to rebuild the engine, so I just wanted to scrape away as much of the carbon as I could. I did try cleaning a little bit around the valves, but I wanted to be careful. This is because the valves seal the cylinder for engine compression. Looking back, I would have probably opened the covers on the side of the engine to access and clean whatever debris was near the valves. At the time, I was just concerned with the engine head gasket, so I didn't want to keep adding on to the scope of this project. And although it's no excuse, sometimes, like this time, an engine rebuild is just not in the immediate plans. For me, some of the reasons behind not rebuilding the engine just yet is budget and tools needed. You see, the process not only includes the tools needed to rebuild the engine, but also the tools needed to split the tractor apart, remove, and hold the engine while rebuilding. This is a view of what the cylinder head looks like. As seen, there are a lot of carbon deposits in the combustion chamber. Again, I used Marvel Mystery Oil to spray down the combustion chamber to start to remove the carbon. Looking back at this, the whole head would have benefited from soaking it in Marvel Mystery Oil for a long period of time first. That being said, I tried anything and everything to scrape, brush, pick, and remove the carbon deposits. And again, although this is not the proper process, at the time, cleaning the carbon was just one task added to another. Remember, the primary task was to replace the head gasket before it leaked. As a side note, since this is a gasoline engine, we'll briefly overview gasoline as related to these carbon deposits. Gasoline, gas, or petrol is created from a process from refining crude oil at oil refineries. Chemically, gasoline is made up of many things, especially considering the additives to the fuel. That being said, we'll focus on the organic compounds in the gasoline. These organic compounds are composed of carbon and hydrogen. This is why sometimes you may have heard the term hydrocarbons in a conversation about the chemistry of gasoline. So if they were burnt at the simplest form with only oxygen, the only elements would be hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. And if those elements had full combustion, they would form water, H2O, or carbon dioxide, CO2. If combustion wasn't fully complete, carbon monoxide, CO, would also be formed. It is most likely that you have heard about carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide in conversations about exhaust or emissions of a gasoline engine. We hear about carbon dioxide as it relates to emissions in the atmosphere. We also hear about carbon monoxide as it is poisonous to us. 
That being said, the carbon deposits left behind in the engine are from a rich air fuel mixture or even a little bit of oil entering into the cylinder of the combustion chamber. When viewing the carbon deposits, wear in the cylinder walls, and an unknown service history, these are the initial signs that this engine is old and tired. You can say that sometimes an old project such as this needs a full rebuild to be done properly. Again, for this project, I'm also considering budget, time, and tools. With those things considered, sometimes an incremental process can be just as good. This is, of course, if you're willing to accept the risk that the parts that you did not fix may break sooner rather than later. Now thinking about this engine, keep in mind that aside from the coolant leak from the water pump pulley, we were able to start the engine up. That being said, the water pump leak at least got us to look inside and see the condition of the carbon buildup. In this view, the cylinder head is sitting in the oil drain pan. Again, looking at this view, because the engine head is not very tall, I wonder if soaking it overnight in a couple inches of Marvel Mystery Oil would have helped to remove more carbon. As seen from the progress on the engine head, you can start to see some of the smooth metal surface beneath the carbon. And since this process of removing the carbon was so long, you start to wonder about things. I wondered if this engine had ever been rebuilt or how many times over 80 years the carbon had been removed from the cylinders. I also wondered how many years it took to build up the carbon seen at the beginning of this process. Moving on with the cleaning, I started to clean the threads where the spark plugs would be set into using a brass wire brush. I also used a wire brush to clean some of the holes within the cylinder head which had a bit of corrosion in them. And at this time I just wanted to clean around the surface of the head which would contact the new head gasket. I proceeded to flip the cylinder head to clean the spark plug threads from the top with a wire brush. I also used a shop towel to help get some of the loose debris from the threads. So again I flipped the engine head over. Now this whole process wasn't the best or more efficient and nowhere near the proper procedure to clean. That being said, when all the work is done, I knew it was a lot better than doing nothing. And as you can see, appearance-wise it looks better without all that carbon. I proceeded to turn the engine by hand. This is also not the procedure considering that the loose carbon could score the cylinder walls. But since the cylinder walls needed to be resleeved anyway, I wanted to make sure that the engine was still loose enough to turn over. Keep in mind there's still a lot of carbon around the edge of the valves and valve seats, but at this point I really didn't want to touch them with anything more than a shop towel. Now you've heard me say it before, but even again looking back at this point, I would have or should have put a lot of Marvel Mystery Oil and just let the cylinders soak overnight. Soaking the cylinders probably would have helped to loosen the rings, especially when there's small carbon deposits left over. As mentioned previously, the cylinder head studs were chased. Like the removal process, this will also help to reinstall the new head gasket and later reinstall the cylinder head. The cylinder head gasket dropped right into place. It looked good especially with most of the carbon and some of those holes cleaned. The cylinder head also dropped in very easily over the clean threads. I taped the spark plug holes to keep the breeze from going into the cylinders. I quickly brushed the threads on the top of the cylinder head. This tractor was previously converted from a 6 volt to a 12 volt system. This includes an automotive 12 volt alternator with a bracket. Before reinstalling the bracket for the alternator, I wanted to grind down some of the edges of the bracket. Since there was so much paint layered over the flat edge of the bracket, I wanted to clean it. I then quickly repainted the bracket using spray paint to match the rest of the tractor. As a bit of a spoiler alert, I did forget to mount the alternator bracket before I started to torque down the engine head. So just keep in mind to mount all brackets before you start this sequence. I added the mount for the throttle linkage over the studs on the top of the cylinder head. At this time I decided not to reinstall the wiring harness. I started to add new fasteners over the threads by hand. This was the beginning of the process to tighten down the cylinder head to the engine block. Now it was time to really begin to torque down the fasteners on the cylinder head. I torqued the new fasteners for the cylinder head in three steps. The steps were to torque initially at 20 pound feet, then 40 pound feet, and finally at 55 pound feet. I do not know the proper torque sequence, so I made my own diagram for a torque pattern. Here's a look at the diagram. It's not a guide, but it's just a representation of what I did in this video for this engine on this project. As seen, it's somewhat of a crisscross pattern moving from the center outward. 
This was the first step to torque the fasteners on the cylinder head at 20 pound feet. And I'll say it again to please keep in mind that I had already gone through and chased each of the threads on the studs. I keep repeating this because it really did make it much easier to remove, reinstall, and start this procedure with the new fasteners. Now this was the second step to torque the fasteners of the cylinder head at 40 pound feet. So along with chasing the threads, this process was very repetitive and time consuming. That being said, I knew that it was worth it if it allowed me to torque the head properly. This was the third and final step to torque the fasteners of the cylinder head at 55 pound feet. With the final step, I knew the head would not be only torqued properly, but also should be easier to remove if I serviced the engine again in the near future. I then installed the spark plugs and torqued each to 25 pound feet. Looking back, I could have just installed the spark plugs before the tape. I think I put the tape in first just in case I needed clearance for anything. That being said, I also see no problem with waiting on the spark plugs because they're less likely to get hit by something. Waiting also let the very little bit of air pressure escape while torquing the head of the engine. This of course would be if both the intake and the exhaust valves closed. Now the new head gasket was installed and the cylinder head was torqued to spec. With easy access, I thought I'd touch up the paint a little bit on the top of the engine head. Hey, thank you for joining us and sticking with us through the whole video. There will still be more videos to come as we continue work on this Ford 9N tractor project. As I make new videos, I want to share them with you, so subscribe now. Also comment, like, and check out some of the other content on our channel.